Right here is a receipt from the groceries I just bought. And on this receipt, there is a list, which states I purchased an orange, banana, an apple, and an avocado. The similarity of the receipt compared to a stock market index is relatively simple. The receipt contains a list of grocery items, where a stock market index contains a list of investments with a sole purpose to measure the performance of particular markets. In order to fully understand stock market indexes, this video is going to cover everything you need to know, starting with explaining one of the most popular indexes out there, the S&P 500. I will also include other major market indexes to know about, how they are calculated, and how to invest in them. Because over time, stock market indexes have been known to build strong wealth for investors. So let's first talk about the S&P 500 index. And if you've ever heard of the S&P 500, the reason for its popularity is because it contains 500 of the largest publicly traded companies in the US. Because of this, it is known to be one of the best indicators on how US stocks are performing and gives a great scope of the US economy as an overall view, which explains why it is talked about all over the news. Since a stock market index is a list of investments, some of the companies that are in the S&P 500 index include Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and many more you've probably heard of. I'll discuss later in this video how different indexes are calculated, but for the S&P 500, it is market cap weighted, which means that the companies listed in this index are valued based on their company's sizes. As of this video, Apple is the biggest company by market cap, and because of that, it carries the highest weight in the index. Currently, Apple makes up 5.98% of the index, with Microsoft having 5.33%, and Amazon being the third, right now at 2.53%. So all the companies that are in this index are calculated based off of their size, their market cap, and it equates to a total of 100%. Now the benefit of a stock market index is it allows investors to compare current price levels with their past levels to analyze their market's performance. Something outstanding about the S&P 500 is that it has seen an average annual return of roughly 10% since its creation in 1957, which if we compare that to other countries' indexes or a global index, the results are much stronger and that shows and indicates to investors that the US economic performance historically has been strong. And when there are years that the index declines, this typically means that the US economy as a whole is not performing well at the time. Now, something else important is that the S&P stands for the Standard & Poor's Company which is the index provider, the company that created the index and continues to operate its structure. So the S&P 500 has an algorithm that automatically detects with specific criteria which companies belong in the index. It is not manually selected or changed by any individual. The S&P 500 is measured by a base value. This value is measured in points and not dollars, so it is not necessarily significant to understand the value, but more so the change that it has over time. With that being said, it is also in points and not dollars because there is no cost to an index because you cannot purchase an index directly you actually have to purchase a fund that tracks the index specifically, which I will discuss later in this video how to invest in these different indexes that I'm going to be discussing throughout this video. But it's important to understand that you cannot change any specific stock or investment that is in an index. The only way to purchase more is by buying more separately. Because stock market indexes vary significantly, let's now talk about other major market indexes you should know about. Now the S&P 500 is just one of many indexes out there because they there's actually roughly 5,000 total indexes in the US alone. Let's start off with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is short for Dow Jones or the Dow. And this tracks 30 of the largest and most influential publicly traded companies in the US. And because the Dow Jones tracks 30 companies, it represents about a fourth of the total US stock market, where the S&P 500 covers roughly 80%. Something unique about the Dow Jones is that it is a price weighted index, which means companies that have higher share prices are going to be given a greater weight in the index. Another major index to know about is the NASDAQ Composite which if you are familiar with the NASDAQ exchange, you will know that it is commonly known for high tech stocks. The NASDAQ composite is a market cap weighted index, which is similar to the S&P 500, but it contains all the stocks that are listed under the NASDAQ exchange. 
This is actually more than 2,500 stocks and includes businesses that are even outside of the US. Although it is known for tech stocks, the index also includes many sectors such as financial, industrial, insurance, and transportation sector, just to name a few. A big difference between the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones or the S&P 500 is that the NASDAQ composite has both large and small companies. This means that the value movement between the index could be coming from much more speculative investments and much more volatility. As discussed earlier, there are many indexes out there to follow, and I came upon this article, which I will leave a link in the description below for you to check out yourself if you'd like, but it covers different stock market indexes to check out. The article covers the three most common types of indexes, which include global, regional, and national indexes. A global stock market index is one that tracks equities throughout the entire world, and listed below on this article are some of the most popular ones. There is then regional stock market indexes that track equities from specific regions around the world. Regions included could be Asia, Europe, Latin America. And lastly, we have national stock market indexes, which provide exposure to specific countries. Some countries may be difficult to track proper performance due to size, especially if they're in an emerging market which is one not yet developed, but is in the process of growing. Below, you can see different indexes for different countries, such as China, Japan, Germany, and the list goes on. Although we have covered the two most popular forms of calculating indexes, I wanna go over a proper overview on the different types you may see and how they are truly calculated. The first type of calculated index you may see is a market cap weighted index. This is the most common method you will see and basically works by combining the sizes of every company listed in the index and separating their value based on their own size. For example, a large company would carry much more weight in an index than a small company would. Larger companies tend to have a bigger impact on the economy and because of this, they are given more representation in the performance of the index. The second type of calculated index you will see is a price weighted index. As discussed earlier, the Dow Jones is a price weighted index, which is not commonly seen, but for the Dow, a higher price stock carries a higher weight in the index. So a $100 stock would carry much more influence than a $50 stock, although the indexes that use this price weighted calculation need to adjust for factors such as stock splits or dividends. To me personally, this seems to require much more attention to the fundamentals of the index, and yet alone the share price does not mean anything compared to the actual sizes of the companies. And that is why a price weighted index is not as common to see. The last type of calculated index I'm going to discuss is an equal weighted index. This means that each stock in the index has the same weighted percentage that is contributed to the performance of the index. An example of this is the S&P 500 Equal Weighted Index, which each stock represents 0.2% of the index. A problem with this is that to keep each stock with their equal proportion, the shares of each company are going to have to be constantly bought and sold, which can add to tax liabilities. Due to this concern, if you are going to be getting an equal weighted index, ETFs are a much better option because they are much more tax efficient. And this is because ETFs are made in a form that when they are bought and sold, they do not trigger capital gains and losses like typical mutual funds do. Now that you understand stock market indexes, let's now talk about how to officially invest in them. As discussed earlier in this video, a stock market index is simply a list of investments that is intended to track a particular market and is not able to be directly bought from an investor. The index is measured by a base value that goes up and down by by point and not a dollar unit. When it comes to stock market indexes, you will typically be able to search for the specific index you are interested in and can purchase it in either an index fund or an exchange traded fund, which is short for ETF. And if you are interested to learn more about each of these funds in more detail, I also made videos that I will leave a link in the description below to, as well as a pop-up here. And to name a few, investment firms like Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and Vanguard have their own index funds that are used to track specific specific indexes of choice. For example, if you search Fidelity S&P 500 Index Fund, Google will pop up the name and ticker symbol for this fund that you can actually purchase. I would also recommend sticking to the index fund that is similar to your investment platform to avoid extra fees. On top of this, you can also invest into ETFs, which have become much more popular recently with their ease of trading, their tax efficiency, and the ability to buy throughout all investment platforms without extra fees. If you were to search the S&P 500 ETFs, you will see many articles that provide you with a list of the top ones. The first one on Forbes shows the ticker SPDR, S&P 500 ETF, 
ticker symbol SPY. And make sure to check the expense ratio because this is the annual cost charged to you for owning the fund. The next option that pops up is the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF. IVV is the ticker, which has an expense ratio of 0.03%. Another popular option is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol VOO, with a 0.03% expense ratio, and many more you can see if you want to continue to search from. To purchase these investments, you simply need to go to your investment account and search for that ticker, and you'll be able to buy the selected amount that you choose. And the difference with an index fund and an ETF is that if you're going to buy an index fund, it will not go through until the next end of market day, where if it's an ETF, it will go through instantly. You can buy and sell throughout the day. An index fund, you need to wait until the end of the market close. And if you're confused that all index funds typically state that they are an index fund in the title, and ETFs typically state that as well. Another way to tell the difference is typically the amount of letters in their ticker symbol. Index funds are known to contain five letters and ETFs are known to be two to four. With that being said, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching this video. And if you are interested in content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the Money Talk channel.